the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee, Ronna McDaniel. Hi, Ronna. How are you doing? Hi. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Um, I want to jump right into the business at hand in the next 24 hours, which is important elections in the Commonwealth of Virginia and in Ohio. Ohio has a couple of state in, uh, uh, initiatives, uh, uh, Measure 1 and Measure 2, and Virginia's got a whole slate of candidates uh, as well. And we've seen just a master class in Virginia given by Glenn Youngkin as to how to bank early vote. And I know at the RNC, you've, over, you've steered the uh, bankyourvote.com uh, website and the RNC's attempt to get into the 21st century and go get the votes where you got to go get the votes. How, how is the Bank Your Vote uh, project going? And are you going to go to school on Glenn Youngkin uh, over the last few weeks and months and maybe kind of kick it up a couple notches and nationalize it? Oh, well, we've already nationalized it. Uh, the Bank Your Vote initiative we launched, I'm glad to see Virginia's adopting it and Governor Youngkin has taken it on. But we've launched Bank California, Bank Wisconsin, Bank Ohio, and we're launching it in, in battleground states with key stakeholders and state-specific websites because we really do need to educate our voters on the importance of voting early and voting by mail. And when you do that, you free up resources that we would otherwise be using chasing your vote to allow us to go find new voters and independent voters. So we have to start banking our votes. I, I liken it this way. You don't start scoring in the fourth quarter of a football game. We have to be scoring in all four quarters if we're going to win elections. Absolutely, uh, 100% right. Uh, now, in Ohio, the two uh, statewide initiatives, uh, Measure 1 and Measure 2, has the RNC taken a position on those? You know, we don't engage with ballot initiatives. <laughs> Obviously, we, we don't think they should vote on Measure 1, um, vote, vote no on Measure 1. We think they should uh, take adopt that stance, but it's a a lot of corporate money coming in, and we can't engage in that in that issue. But obviously, we've launched Bank Your Vote Ohio as we're gearing up for a key Senate race, some House seats that we can win in 2024, and a presidential state that is battleground. It's been trending Republican. Right. Uh, speaking of battlegrounds and how they're trending, uh, New York Times Siena polling came out uh, yesterday, and it's not very good news for the incumbent President Joe Biden, is it? No, I mean, it's very clear the Democrat uh, legacy media and the establishment don't want Biden. They're scared. He's a terrible uh, candidate for president, even though he is an incumbent president. His poll numbers are terrible. He's losing significantly in, in a matchup with former President Trump in five battleground states. So you see people like David Axelrod and some of the Obama alumni coming out now and telling Biden to get out of the race. Because it is do or die. I mean, right now, ballot access is an issue, and you can't get on the ballot in many of these states. The the top, the clock is ticking for Biden uh, on, on whether or not he can jump out of this race and anybody else can jump in. I'm joined by Ron McDaniel, the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee. It's a year to the, to the 2024 election, almost to the day, Ronna. Do, can, can you remember in your lifetime a political party a year out from a major election openly calling on having their president, their incumbent, get out? I, I haven't. And I think this is an argument right now within the Democrat Party. I think Biden doesn't want to go anywhere, right? These investigations are ramping up against the Biden Inc. His family members have now seen to get been seen to get over $20 million from foreign entities into 10 different or 20 different LLCs, 10 different family members receiving millions of dollars. He's got some legal jeopardy. He doesn't want to walk away from the White House. His party desperately wants him to walk away. But I don't think Joe Biden's going anywhere uh, because he's going to do what's in his best self, self-interest, even if it's not in the self-interest of his party. Now, I want to shift over to some more international stuff and compare it to the kind of the circus atmosphere that was going on in the House of Representatives during the speaker battle uh, last month. We had our problems, certainly, and it took a lot longer and it was kind of embarrassing for a while that a handful of Republicans held up the process to finally pick a, a speaker that everybody could agree on. And that was that was bad for what it was. But Ronna McDaniel, the Democratic Party, 
has an anti-Semitic problem on their hands that is a raging inferno within their Absolutely. conference, within their caucus, and no one is willing to to call it out for what it is. Where where is Hakeem Jeff? Where is where is Democratic leadership saying no to this? I think this is a moment of such moral clarity for our country, and I'm, I'm disgusted by a Democrat party that's refusing to call out college campuses that are refusing to call out this anti-Semitism. Listen, you can have difference of opinions on political issues, but when you're marching on campuses and saying kill a certain group of people or, or gas them, just plug in a different group. There'd be moral outrage. But to have this happening to Jewish Americans who've already survived the Holocaust, who were given the state of Israel because 6 million Jews died in World War II, this is disgusting. And Rashida Tlaib in Michigan and others who are using anti-Semitic tropes and chants and are not being condemned by everybody. She's making videos. She's making videos videos. threatening Joe Biden. Yeah, but she's also using these anti-Semitic slurs. And, you know, you can have differences of opinions about world events. But to say that people should die because they're Jewish or be killed because they're Jewish this is disgusting. The first time in history, by the way, I will note that either party has picked a Jewish co-sponsor of a debate is this upcoming debate. The RNC has partnered with the Republican Jewish Coalition because we do have moral clarity as a party, par- party. We understand that it was a terrorist attack that took on Hamas and any conditions of ceasefire or humanitarian pause, which the Biden administration is now adopting in their wordsmithing, should not even be discussed until hostages are released. Let's not forget 32 Americans died. Americans are still being held hostage. And that is not humanitarian. The way 1,500 people were slaughtered in Israel was not humanitarian. Imagine if this happened on our southern border, what we would be doing right now. This is disgusting. And so the Democrat Party got got an issue because they have allowed this to seep into their party. They've tried to have it both ways. And Joe Biden is now saying you can't have it both ways. You need to have moral clarity. The polling data that was within embedded within the uh, New York Times Siena poll showed that Joe Biden is losing in hemorrhaging support largely with Latinos, but a lot with black Americans. Uh, uh, Apparently, Donald Trump is uh, polling around 22 percent with black Americans, which is an all time high for for a Republican in in any major poll. Jasmine Crockett, who is a Democratic representative, was on CNN over the weekend with Dana Bash, and she attributed it, uh, Biden's drop with black Americans, to their feelings um, dictating their reality. I think that's a little whistling past the graveyard, Rhonda. What do you think? Totally. Listen, you go, you look at the mayor of Dallas, an African-American mayor who just switched to the Republican Party. Why? And he, he and Eric Johnson talks about this. He says, because... It started with the defund the police movement. The Democrat Party adopted a movement that has absolutely hurt black and minority communities because they decimated police departments across this country. We are now seeing a rise in crime. We are seeing businesses leave, jobs leave, economic economic opportunity leave, taxpayer funds leave, public schools. This is what's happening. These are smart, savvy voters. They understand that Joe Biden and the Democrat Party, their policies are killing their communities. And then on top of that, you have fentanyl coming in through our southern border. You see this migrant crisis in urban communities across the country with people saying, what are you doing, Democrat Party? And they are not stopping this issue. So it is absolutely affecting their standing with minority voters. I would say give right now to GOP.com. Help us open these community centers that we had in 2022 in 38 different black, Asian, and Hispanic communities, and we have grown with these communities that have been taken for granted by the Democrat Party, and we are showing up as Republicans and saying, it is time that you get results, and that's what our party will deliver for you, and that's why you're seeing such huge growth in, in these communities coming over to our party. Ronna McDaniel, I know you can only set the stage and give the opportunity in a most neutral format you possibly can, and then it's up to the candidates to do their thing. With the debate in Miami Wednesday night, if you had your druthers, if you had your ability to 
to pick the right mix of domestic versus foreign policy, what would a Ronna McDaniel ideal debate be as far as how much time spent on current events, foreign uh, policy versus domestic stuff? I think it'd be all of the above. I think this is a security election. People are seeking economic security. They're seeking security in the streets where they live. They're seeking security nationally. Joe Biden's failing on every single level. And I think Americans are are worried. And they're looking at our party and saying, what solutions can you provide? Can you fill this leadership vacuum that we're seeing from the Democrat Party? And I think this is going to be one of the most pivotal debates. I'm so excited that Hugh is going to be on the stage as a moderator, that Salem is part of this. Thank you, Salem Radio, for all that you've done. We are really excited. But this is a moment that we have to meet as a party. And when you are seeing everything falling apart domestically with energy, with inflation, with our schools, with crime, with fentanyl, and then internationally with the rise of China and Ukraine and our border and now Israel, our, our whole world has fallen apart in three short years under Joe Biden, and we need to restore sanity, and that's putting a Republican in the White House. And uh, finally, Rana, I, this is my pitch to make some news. I, I know you're not going to give me details, but I'm just I'm just curious quickly. Is there going to be a fourth debate before Iowa has their caucus? Here's the reality. I know there's calls for the RNC to stop doing debates. If the RNC said we're going to not do any more debates, there would be way more debates. The candidates would negotiate directly with the network. So, Yes, we're going to have more debates. We're going to let the process play out. Debates plural? Like, There's going to be more than yes, one? Yes, there will be more debates, yes. And the candidates are going to have to you know, be able to have their voice heard because eventually it's coming down to one thing. If you feel like the process is fair, you'll support the party and the eventual nominee. And very and quickly... And very that quickly, does. what are the what are the parameters going to be? Are there going to be tighter parameters to get in? We released it already for the fourth debate, so it's six percent and eighty thousand voters, uh, small dollar donors. So that is uh, already released for the fourth debate. It'll be in uh, December. Ron McDaniel, as always, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for letting Salem be a part of the next debate.